give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can come on let him know I give myself
conceptualize the idea uh, and his desire to uh, create man and to put man into this earth uh, that he has already made. Many of us are familiar with it. I preach it a thousand times a year. He had already created the earth between verse number one, verse number two, something cataclysmic happens where he needs now to, uh, to form a man to, to reproduce himself in the earth so that the earth now can come back into proper alignment and come back into proper order. Yeah. So, so he says here now that it is my it is my desire now that I will make man and I will make them in my likeness and I'll make them in my image so that the image of myself reflected in the earth will cause the earth now to come back into its proper accordance, cause the earth to come back into its proper alignment. And what God is desiring to do in this time and in this season is to give you a realm of power so that whatever environment, whatever atmosphere you find yourself in, you yourself are the thing that will bring that world or that environment back into proper placement. If we would begin now in this season to operate in the power of God as God has truly designed, there will be a whole lot of things that are misplaced that will come back into proper or right position and proper order and proper designation. And this is the purpose of that anointing. This is the purpose of the Holy Ghost. This is the purpose of glory to God. The glory of God upon your life. Not for us to be self-serving, but for us to be empowered to serve. There are a whole lot of people in this season that are using the power of God to build platforms for their own success. The power of God to bring build platforms for their own glory, a platform for their own prosperity. But God is looking in this season for individuals that desire to use the power of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, as their empowerment, glory to God, not to make a big name, but their empowerment to serve. Somebody say, I need power to serve. I need power to serve. Power to serve. So he stops. He stops, and he he is having a conversation about you and I, and he says that I'm gonna make man in my likeness. I'm gonna make man in my image. I'm gonna cause him to be the exact replica, the exact reproduction of who I am uh, in the earth. Glory to God. So that when I look down on the earth, I will be looking at myself. So the power of God upon us is so that we will not only be empowered to serve, but that we will learn and have the ability to serve him as him. Uh, are you understanding? The power of God comes upon me so that I can have the ability to serve him I said serve him as him. Because this, my beloved, all of your works without the power of God will total to be nothing. The only thing that is worthy to serve God is himself. And if you are not the image of God in the earth, you'll be operating in a rejected atmosphere. But when you come to God as himself, you only talk it here. And this is the purpose of the blood. I said this is the purpose of the blood. So that when you approach God, God will never see you as you. He will see you as himself in his son. That's why Romans starts to tell us that we've been justified by faith. And we have access into this grace by faith. Grace not just being the unmerited favor of God, but grace being the enablement, the ability of God all right upon our human flesh to do, Lord God, his will, to do his bidding, to operate in the purpose and the assignment of your birthing, the purpose and the assignment, the intention of God upon your life. There is no proper glory to God. There is no proper manifestation of your sonship unless there is an empowerment of the power of God upon you that authorizes you not just to walk in this realm, but to walk in heaven, earth, and hell. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Are you 
understanding this, so that there is a process. There's a process for this level of empowerment. There's a process for this level of designation. There's a process for this level of glory to God access into this next realm of the power of God. And I just want to just something out there. The things that we've seen in the body of Christ has just been an introduction to the true power that God is desiring to give us the true power that God is desiring to enter, glory to God, our lives and everything that we're touching, everything that we're embracing, everything that we're connecting. We're so caught up on, on, on the blind eyes open. We're so caught up on the legs coming out. We're so caught up on the creative miracles that can happen in the body that we have Stop the power of God from the next generation of people that seek to be empowered in a greater level of power than just bodily miracles. Oh, Are you understanding? Oh, I'm telling you, there is a place in the Spirit of God greater than this. Yes, yeah. That we have not accessed yet because we've stopped the process. Take it ever don't stop the process. We stopped the process of our development. We stopped the process of our growth. We stopped the process of our building in the thing of the Spirit of God. And as the things of the Spirit of God are being built, glory to God, then there is a decay of natural things. That's why your eyes and your hearts never have to think when things around you seem as if they are crumbling. Because if one world is going to rise, there must come a crumbling of another place. And that's why Jesus declared that if this earthly body, belly talking, yeah. if you tear this earthly body down, then there is something that is able to be built that's not made by man's hands. And that's the realm of power that God wants to give you access that man can give. Opportunities that man can't provide. Yeah. Are you understanding this? So there is a greater level of empowerment. Yes. There's yes. a greater level of dominion. There's a greater level of authority that God wants you to have. Someone say, God wants me to have it. Yeah. All right, if God wants me to have it, then my mind has to release the things that the flesh tells me is necessary. Yeah. The materialistic things that the flesh desires. The materialistic things that the flesh holds on to that prohibits me from walking in true spirit power. The things that the natural tells me I must desire. Because glory to God, if you're going to crave and hunger after righteousness, there must be, glory to God, a void on the inside of you. That's why there are times when you don't understand the void and the emptiness that you feel, glory to God. And you want to bind the devil and you want to rebuke the devil, but God places a divine void on the inside of your spirit so that you will continually hunger and continually thirst after greater level of his power. But what we do is now, when we sense the void, we fill it with people, we fill it with hobbies, and our Lord says, don't fill it with those things, learn how to fill it with me. Because what I'm doing now is I'm fine-tuning your appetite for something that you've not tasted before. I'm, I'm, I'm fine-tuning your appetite for something that you've not hungered before. I'm causing your palate to taste change, all right? So then you find out that the word that I, I was used to getting and the word that I thought I was happy with now, I'm not happy with that word anymore. No, they didn't do anything to me. They didn't say anything about me. But there's a craving in my spirit for something fresh, something greater. You ain't seen nothing here. The appetite, the appetite of your spirit begins to crave something, something different, something that's a higher level. Of yes, sir. Yes, sir. Something that's a high level of uh, glory to God, uh, meat and food. So, so then don't place that void in there. And then no matter how much you go to church and no matter how much you hang around with them, you still feel empty on the inside yeah. being surrounded yeah. by crowds of people. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. You wonder what that is. God said, no, no, that's me calling you, calling you to the hill of the Lord. And he promises, brother, if we would come to the hill of the Lord, that when we get to the hill of God, he would cause the earth to give her increase. He would cause the uh, trees to give her fruit. He would cause
Ghost, glory to God, the showers of blessings to come down in their season. And the reason why many times we are not seeing the blessings of God come down in its full measure is because we are neglecting the hunger. We're neglecting the thirst. We're neglecting the drawing and the pulling of the Spirit of God to pray. The drawing and, and the pull of the Spirit of God to pass. The drawing and the pulling of the Spirit of God to come to a different place in the Spirit of God. Listen, beloved, there is a place of provision where all of your needs will always be met. But you've got to come to the place. Glory. Are you all going to talk to me today? Glory. You're going to have to come to the place, the place where, where, where it is, the place where this, this level of provision is. So, so, so my appetite is changing as my mind is releasing the things that I feel are necessary. All right, so as my mind is releasing the things that I feel is necessary, I'm experiencing a, a, a renewal of my thoughts, all right? Where Isaiah 55 starts to tell us that his thoughts are not our thoughts, ways are our ways, but he gives us the, 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 the solution now to this thought in my transplant. He tells us in, I believe, verse number six of that, he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he's near. At this level of seeking, it's not just that little patty cake type of, uh, oh God, do it for me, God. Uh, you know, God, I want you to do it for me. Please do it for me, Lord. No, 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 you go past that. This level of seeking is this level of inquiry. When David declares, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that when I seek after. He desired now to be in this permanent place in the Spirit of God. Aren't you tired of moving in and out? Of position in God. Are you tired of one day feeling the power of God, the next day feeling winter cold? Are you tired of one day doing the works of the Lord and the next day doing nothing? There is a permanent place. Are you hearing this? There's a permanent place, but it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some energy. It's going to take some sacrifice. Someone say sacrifice. It's going to take some self denial. It's going to take, glory to God, you putting aside what you feel you want to do or what you feel uh, you desire to do and, and yielding your will uh, to the will of God. Yielding your heart to God. Yielding your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It's going to take you doing something. I need you to look at your neighbor behind you and tell your neighbor, it's going to take you doing something. It's going to take you doing something. Come on, come on. You're not going to get this just by wanting it. You're not going to just get this by hoping and, and wishing it to happen. It's going to take a willing intention from your own heart. Yeah. And my mind, my mind, my mind is releasing those things where Colossians uh, 3 and 1 says that we are now setting our affections on things above and not on things below. Yeah. And we're, we're focusing now on those things in the spiritual where Christ sits. So my mind now takes another level of uh, transportation now where I'm more concerned about what God is doing in the spirit realm than I am concerned about what God is doing down here on earth. Yeah. This is what's wrong with the body of Christ today. We are so focused on what's going on in this world, yes. in this church world, in, in, in others' lives, in you know, talking other churches, where we are neglecting what God is trying to say to us in the spirit realm. If you want to succeed in this time and season, Lord God, you've got to pick up the skill of the spirit. My God. Yeah. I said the skill of the spirit. I'm not just talking about the know-how of the natural, but we are busy bodies in another man's matters. Are you understanding this? I'm talking about the skill of the spirit. Glory. Yeah. There will be, glory to God, as they called Daniel in there. And nobody else could interpret the handwriting on the wall. Because Daniel had dedicated himself to pray. You know they talking. Daniel was a man that didn't compromise when challenged. And that's what's wrong with some of us right now. The moment challenge hits our lives, we compromise. We don't serve God no more. We don't serve ministry no more. We don't serve the man of God no more. God is looking for people that will stand past. Many of us, many of us, many of us, Lord 
of God like to retreat. The moment that he comes, we like to retreat. We don't want to do the things that God's called us to do anymore because of the things that we're experiencing. But how do you get the skill of the Spirit? You get the skill of the Spirit by continuing to press forward. No matter how much challenge hits your life, you are learning how to press forward. Tell your neighbor, press forward. I'm mindful of the things that are going on in the spirit realm. So that when the time comes, Pastor Verse, when the time comes for interpretation to come, I'll have the skill that's necessary. And the skill that I have that's necessary at that time, the Bible says, your gift will now make room for you and bring you before great men. You try to hang around nobody. You try to hang around people not going anywhere. Lord God, sharpen your skill. Hang on my shoulder. You try to God. I'm just hanging around with the low-level Christians, the low-level thinkers. Lord God, sharpen your skill. Because you level of skill will attract that same level of skill. reason why you're attracting low level people is because your spirit's low level. Oh my God, you better teach. You ain't talking. Because guess what, beloved? Guess what, beloved? Something can't come to you unless it's on that same level where you are. Y'all ain't saying, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Uh, come on, come on. It has to be on that same level. That means that the energy coming out of you that's pulling that thing to you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here today. You want to look at the things that have been coming up in your life and you want to determine, guess what? I need to change my level. You ain't seeing nothing here. I need to get to a place where this thing can't reach me anymore. Y'all don't want to start appreciating it. Come on, cause we're, 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 we don't want this because we want to stay on that same level. We just we want God to do it for us. But God says if you don't want it to reach you, come on, change your position, change your level, change your dimension. Hallelujah! Yes, the thing that's coming to you, not to match you anymore. Ooh, glory! Yes. Wow. Ooh, my God, good. my God. That's good. And a lot of times, the reason why we receive it is because it looks just like us. Yeah. I said the reason why we receive it is because it looks just like us. Glory to God, glory to God. There are times when things come towards you. Glory to God. And it immediately it recognizes its face. You open up yourself to it. You welcome it. But the moment, glory to God, if you get to the point where you stop recognizing the things of the darkness, I'm a There is something built in you that automatically rejects it. Yes. 
understand yes, what I'm saying. Yes. But I'm saying to you here today, Thank you're going to receive them. Because he didn't look like them. Right. Tell your neighbor, I'm changing my location. Ah, I'm changing my location. Glory to God. Changing my location. I'm changing my address. I'm changing my placement in the Spirit of God because I'm tired of people just popping up at my spiritual house. Do I got expecting me to wake them up, open my arms? I'm tired of that. And when you're tired of people just jumping by, you learn either how to lock your door or you learn how to move. Glory to God. When you learn, glory to God, how to hear the door knock and don't open. Are you understanding this today? I don't want them to think I'm better than them. But you've got to come to a place where you're tired of the devil robbing you. Yeah. You're tired of the devil stealing from yeah. you. And you learn how to click, click, lock the door. Yeah. Glory. 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 Somebody come into a house and steal the goods of the house, except they first buy the strong man. Ah, uh, yes. And how they're going to buy the strong man? First of all, they have to have access. Yeah. And you can know, watch the things that has access to your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, because out of the heart comes what the issues of life. This heart does not just mean this here. This heart means this. This heart means the core of the power. This heart means your spirit. Because your spirit on the inside of you is the only thing that has creative power. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said your spirit is the only thing that has creative power. Yeah. And when there's open access, Lord God, he comes in, he binds you, and he steals your goods, and he leaves you just like some of us are this very hour. Yeah. Come on, come on. Empty. Without anything that God can use. Come on, abuse and damage. Hallelujah. But the power of God comes upon you, Lord God, to bring you back to restoration. Hallelujah. To bring you back to the building of the Lord where you'll be empowered to serve. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you today? So he says, he said, I'm going to make man in my likeness. I'm going to make man in my image. I want man to serve me as me. I want to be able to look down in the earth and see myself in the earth. See the earth coming back to alignment. See the earth coming back to proper coordinates and placement. See, see things start to work. Lord God, in proper sequence as I've designed it to be. So, so there is a process to the anointing. There's a process to the anointing. And, 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 and there is power. There is power in the process. Someone said there's power in the process. There is power in growing in God. God and taking your levels, Lord of God, in the timing of God. There's a whole lot of believers that are so hungry to arrive somewhere that we skip and we jump over steps, thinking if I skip and if I jump, I'm going to get to success that much sooner. But the power of God comes upon your life when you understand the level you are on and you accept the feeding of God on that particular level, whatever that level is, and you don't allow people to talk you into operating in a level that you're not qualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The church don't want to say amen to that. We want to make, we want to make a scene like we're bigger than where we are. Romans chapter 12, verse number 3 says, the real thing soberly and not to think of ourselves more what highly than we are. You want to your level. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you ought to know the obedience that God requires of your life to operate at that level. Because there's power in the process of God. There's power in the building of God. There's power in the growth process of God. And I'm losing half the church right now because we don't want to hear anything about growth. We don't want to hear anything about development. We don't want to hear anything about feeding. We don't want to have to sit under anybody to get anything for anything. We want the matter to come from heaven. We want God to meet us in our own break room. Yeah. God. And I love all of those things, but there must come a submission yeah. in your heart yeah. to proper feeding. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. 
Somebody say proper feeding. Proper feeding. Proper feeding. Bible talks about the babes desiring the sincere milk of the gospel. So we're coming back, beloved, to the place and the time where we are hungering after the hearing of the words of God that they, 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 they rushed to come to church. They, they rushed to hear the teaching. They, if they had to miss a service, they would make sure they got the MP3s or, or the cassette tapes. Y'all remember that? They would call the sister on the phone and say, Sister, I had to work this morning. What did Pastor preach? Give me the scriptures. Can I borrow your notes? Lord God, but we're in a time now where people can miss five, six, eight Sundays and they never try to figure out what the apostle preached. They never try they won't talk here today. But there must come a hunger. Where before the word finds you, you're finding it. Yeah, glory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, There has to come another hope in your spirit that before God tells you, you're telling him. Yeah. 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 I'm going to say that again. There's another place in the spirit of God that you won't need to call you out to tell you anything. Right. Y'all ain't talking here today. There's another place in the spirit of God that as they're calling you out, you're walking towards them, telling them what they're about to tell you. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing here today. Come on, come on, but, but what we want, we want to be hand fed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to have to spend the energy and the time it takes to seek the face of God for our own answers, our own problems. Y'all talk good in here today. Yeah. But that is the place. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a place of prophetic intelligence Hallelujah. that before the lion roars to prophesy, you already have the information that you need within your Noah. The whole church used to talk about a Noah. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all don't know nothing about that. That was on the inside of you where you knew all things. First John chapter 2 starts telling us about that anointing that's on the inside of us, that empowerment that's on the inside of us. That you come to the place where you need not that anything will teach you. God, God, but that anointing that's in you teaches you of all things. How wonderful would your life be, Lord God, that you, Lord God, where you were in such a place in God that you needed no answers because you knew everything. Jesus. Every time there came up a problem, God would immediately wake up the answer in you. Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. My God. Y'all, yes, we, 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 we don't really want this kind of, we don't want this kind of talking because we, we need, we need somebody to give us confirmation. We need somebody to affirm what God is telling us. We, we, we want them to, we want them to baby us. But they come to a place where Hebrews talks about, Lord God, you being God of hearing, you, you, when the time comes that he needs you to be teachers, you know, he, he finds out that you need to be taught all over again. And some of us are old and great and rusty and nasty, old. Y'all are talking in the things of the Spirit of God, where we're so rusty, we're stuck. Come here, are you understanding here? I've never seen something rusty where we're so rusty and stuck. And some of us are so rusty and stuck, Lord God, we are stuck. Our hearing, we don't hear God anymore. We don't, we don't let talk, talk good in here. We don't hear God anymore. We don't, we don't receive messages from the Lord anymore. What happened to the power field church? Lord God, that used to go to bed and receive messages from God at night. What happened to us, Lord God? When you were wake up in the morning and driving your car, you would see open visions in the road. What happened to the power of God in us? He said, You're done hearing. He says, I can tell it to you, but you won't be able to receive it. Because you stopped your growth and you stopped your development. You stopped the feeding to your spirit. That's why many of us can't serve God and serve ministry anymore. Because we stopped our growth. And we stopped our development. We, we've come to a mental place of, I have arrived. But glory to God. The only reason why you think you've arrived is because you're not around anybody that's greater than yourself. When you start getting around people greater than yourself, you learn very quickly how much you are not there yet. I am a son that you need to stop hanging around people that make you think you're all of that. You need to stop hanging around people, Lord God, Lord God, with the sound of their voice and the words they say and the anointing upon their life makes you feel not like nothing. Not that you are nothing, but it's a level of Humility yes. when you come around greatness. Yes. Yes. yes, glory. My God. Thank you, Lord. And then you can go home.
home saying, God, give me more. Yes. Yes. Because obviously I've been thinking I was there and I'm not anywhere. Yes. I got Hallelujah it. to the Lamb of God. Yes. Huh? So, so this level of empowerment comes as we grow and we develop and we're almost done. This level of empowerment comes as we receive proper feeding. This level of empowerment comes as we submit ourselves to those that the Lord has given a, a watch over us. So we're now we're now watching things that push us below the level of our growth, below the level of our development. But one of the greatest deceptions in this day and time is whether anyone will send people to you to push you out of your, your place of feeding. To cause you to start doing things that you don't have power to maintain. Come on. Man. Sometimes you have the resources to start up, you don't have the power to maintain it. Come on, so what the devil will do, he'll give you the money to start the thing, knowing that you don't have the spiritual ingredients to keep it up. Oh. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yes. And you gotta watch people that push you beyond the level of your growth. When we look in the Word of God and how Jesus comes and accompanies Mary to the wedding of Cana of Galilee, the Bible starts to tell us here, beloved, He starts to tell us that, that, that Jesus is with Mary at this wedding and, and, and they start to run out of wine. How many of y'all remember that? Yeah. Jesus specifically tells Mary, he says, woman, listen, my hour is not yet. He tells her, listen here, I know you see what's in me. I know what you know who I am, but don't push me beyond the time of my appointment. And some of us, because of pride, will venture out before our appointed time. My God. And they'll miss up the entire plan, yes. trying to seem wonderful, yeah. trying to seem exactly. great. My it's not, not in your word. He says, woman, my time is not yet. Yeah. But what does she do? She continues to push him. And, and what God will do now on the opposite perspective, glory to God, those of us that are humble enough to wait, whatever the demand is needed, God will bring, glory to God, those of us into a place called rapid maturation, where he will bypass those that went out before their appointed time without the grace, and then he will rapidly mature the babes and match that level of need. Glory. Are they talking? So some of us old ones in God, some of us old ones at the kingdom center, you better watch your fast now and your stuck tail. Because God will cause you to be bypassed and he'll yes, rapidly mature somebody else. Glory. Yo, yo, listen, even though Jesus knew his hour was not yet, because the demand was there. God calls him to get the grace to meet the need Glory. at that time. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. How does God rapidly mature us? The Bible says in Jeremiah that God comes to Jeremiah first to talk to Jeremiah about what he needed at that time. Jeremiah says, I'm not grown yet. She, God says, don't worry about this level of growth. I'm going to rapidly mature you. He says, what do you look over there? What do you see? He says, I see a rod of the almond tree. God says, you well seen. And based on what you're seeing, I'm going to do what? Hates my word. And this is the anointing that God's placing upon our lives, beloved. Those of us that are willing to stay humble, there is a hastening anointing. Someone say hastening anointing. Hasten anointing. There's a hastening anointing coming upon you. God's going to cause the beams to rapidly mature. Some of the rapid maturation. Maturation. Come on, say rapid maturation. He's rapid causing you to rapidly mature so that you'll meet the need, the desire, the command of God uh, in this earth realm. We see this rapid maturation again in the word of the Lord. Uh, here uh, in uh, Isaiah chapter 6. I want to hit this for a second. Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah sees uh, the Lord high and lifted up, train filling the temple. Isaiah sees the seraphim, the cherubim coming down. The moment Isaiah starts to see this new place in the Spirit of God, Isaiah identifies something in him that was not complete. Something in him was not whole. And we will miss the move of God.
God when we start focusing on, uh, on somebody's weakness as being a hindrance to them moving yeah. into this place yeah. of rapid maturation. Yeah. Because the only thing that God needs that individual to do is see him in yeah. another place, yeah. see him in another direction. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Him, but God makes that part whole so yeah. that He can use yeah. 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 No, yeah. And what God will do in the body of Christ, while some of us are are on the natural doing everything right and in the spirit messed up, God will use people that are naturally messed up. Yeah. He'll make them whole yeah. and they talking and doing yeah. 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 Come on now. yeah. Glory. And he'll cause them to what? Rapidly mature. Yes, glory. He'll cause them to grow up spiritually quick. Thank you, God. You're trying to figure out how they got that, how, how they're walking in those miracles, how are they doing those things. It's because they received the rapid maturation of God, because they've seen God in another place. That's why you don't ever have to push anybody, or you don't ever have to force your way into anything. The only thing you need to do is keep seeing. are becoming sons and sons are becoming fathers. Mm. We're in this time where those that have seen, been seated on thrones in the kingdom of God are now taking their seat at the feet of the yeah. ones that they talk. Yeah. 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 Yo, yo, you don't want to receive this. The yeah. Bible starts to tell us in first you know, that, that Saul had been preferred first but Saul is now lifted up in pride where God now designs a plan to cause the person that Saul would mentor to take his place. So many times in the body of Christ we experience these reversals of position. Where the person that follows you is now your son. Y'all ain't, ain't talking. God, because of prideful fathers, glory to God that refuse to keep seeing. Prideful fathers that can refuse to renew their minds. Prideful fathers that refuse to move beyond the patterns that they thought, glory to God, was the only thing that God could use. Wow. Jesus. Somebody said divine reverse. Divine reverse. Glory. And a praise. And a praise. I'm moving quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. And a praise. It says, Lord, let me have a child, a man child. God, God, hearken to her prayer. Right? She says, I'll, I'll give unto you all the days of his life. I'm then to you. Samuel is in the house of Eli, a prophet, a priest that was way before him in time. But God was trying to recreate a pattern in the earth. And Eli and his sons would not listen to him. Right, right. They would not see it. They would not do it. So what does God do? God divinely plants Samuel right in Eli's house. Yeah. Let's Eli feed Samuel, teach Samuel, build Samuel up for God to the place where one day child Samuel is now so grown where he can hear God for himself. And what people don't want you to be able to do in this season is hear God for yourself. They would rather you depend on them. Yes, yes. Someone said the verse. The My God. Divine reverse. Mm -hmm. Eli doesn't recognize it first that it was God. He sends right. the boy back to sleep several times. Right. Until the last time Eli wakes up. The reason why Eli couldn't hear, hear, and know that I was the Lord is because the Bible said, and that day the word of the Lord was precious. Eli's eyes had waxed dim. Right. 
He couldn't see anymore. And this blindness was not so much natural, but it was spiritual. But the Bible says, when there is no vision, the people perish. So, so what God does is, God starts to starve leaders. He starts to starve leaders. He starts to stop feeding leaders. Because whatever he feeds will grow. Yeah. And it is not his intention to grow that ministry anymore. Yeah. How they talking? It is not his intention to grow that thing anymore. So what he does is he starves that leader. And you find out that leader just starts preaching the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. And you keep going to church saying, is there anything new? Yeah. Come on. It, we, you, did he just preach this last yeah. Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out there's something wrong. But what God is doing is God is shutting the ears of that leader because whatever he feeds will grow. Yeah. So what God does is God starves that individual so that he can feed somebody else. Yeah. So while Eli was growing blind, Samuel's sight was growing strong. Oh, yeah. 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 to the point where he's able to fall off his stool yes. and die. Yes. Mm. The Bible verse in this scene. Jesus. Beloved, the power of God is upon you to serve. Yes. The power of God is upon you to operate in the assignment of God. There must come a love and a passion back in your heart for doing the things of God, doing the service of the Lord. This level in the season of divine reverse is understanding how one thing must decrease so another must increase. John always understood that he was not the Messiah. He understood that one day someone is going to come up, Lord God, in my company, and I'm going to have to learn how to back up to let the grace on my life increase. And there must come a level of maturity in your heart and even in the body of Christ where you see the grace that you used to operate in growing stronger in another person and you learn how to relinquish that assignment to somebody else. And what's wrong with some of us is we can see that anointing grin on somebody else, but because we're so stuck in an assignment, we try to hold and hoard it. Jesus, my God. When John saw the Lord, John says, What? I must decrease and he must increase. I'm going to have to learn how to step aside and move into another purpose of God so that the ministry will keep flourishing. So that the assignment of God upon my leaders can keep advancing and progressing. You don't want to hold a position you don't have power to keep. Yeah. I mean, intercessors that can't pray. I said, people still holding positions can't pray, can't do the things of the Lord. What do you want intercessor for? Jesus. Jesus. Praise and worship leaders that can't worship. Jesus. Tell your neighbor, maybe you can stop you to step aside. Come on. Sometime, sometime before you get fired, you need to learn how to resign. Come on. I said, sometime before you get fired, you need to learn how to resign. And I'm not talking about resigning to sit down and do nothing. I'm talking about saying, all right, apostle, the grace on my life doesn't match what I've been used to doing. I'm going to let me do what my grace is. If you don't like people, you don't need to be the secretary. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. What are you agreeing for? Yes. Yes. Glory. It doesn't work. Operate when you have a grace for. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word right there. That's the word. Well, you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. Well, some of us are very jealous and envious. Mm. Of the new generation that God. Listen, beloved, either you can work with the new generation or you can, or you can be replaced by it. That's right. Yeah. Are you understanding this? Oh, so we're empowered to serve. My God. 
Lastly, I want to I I talk about these works. These works. These works. And greater works. There are two types of works. There's two types of works that the Holy Ghost comes upon you to accomplish. Holy Ghost comes upon you to accomplish these works. The these works are the things that God gives you to do until you're grown up to handle the next level. The these works are the assignments your leaders give you to do so that you'll be able to keep working and staying busy in the kingdom, working and staying busy in ministry. And, and, and these, these works are your introduction so that God is able now to look at your level of service and qualify you for something else. Somebody said, these works. How do you know, Apostle, that there are two different works? Because the Bible says that, that Jesus, all right, gave them after he had appointed 12 disciples. He gave them power to lay hands on the sick. Y'all ain't talking. Right. He gives them power to cast out devils. Uh, is that in your Bible? Yes, After, glory to God, before the Holy Ghost came. So they didn't need the Holy Ghost to do these works. Right, right. Y'all, right. y'all. Yes, yes. Right. Y'all. I said they didn't need the Holy Ghost to do that because Jesus gave them an introductory right. level of power. Right, right. While he was still on earth, right. long before the Holy Ghost ever came, right. y'all they he gave them authority to do these works. Somebody said, "Well, I don't have that greater level of anointing, Lord God, that I need to do for my final destiny." But you do have an anointing to do something. Yeah. Y'all ain't talking here today. Yeah. You might not have the anointing to do the last level of your journey, but you certainly have power to get up off of your tail and do something. Yeah. The Bible said he sends them yeah. to lay hands and to heal. Yeah. And this was before the Holy Ghost ever came. Somebody said, these words. These words. But then he starts to tell them, he says, all right, after he was resurrected, the Bible says for 40 days he appears, he appears unto them, giving them infallible proofs. And what qualifies them now for this empowerment of the Holy Ghost upon them is because God can look back at their track record and see that they were doing something all the time. Right. You think God was carrying lazy people up right. in the upper room just to give them something that they did not deserve, something they didn't even work for? My God. My God. He was going to empower people that were already doing something. Glory. So as you start begging God and asking God for something greater, I need you first to tell God what you've already done. Yes, that's true. I mean, seriously, are you seriously asking God for greater anointing and you haven't even done anything on the level where you are yet? Jesus. We're still trying to get you to come to church on time. Come on. And you're asking God for a greater anointing and going to conferences and convictions thinking you're coming back like the Pope? Listen, beloved, it doesn't work that way. You've got to be able to tell God like Hezekiah did, listen, Lord, I served you. I did this. We know, Lord, God, works don't qualify you for eternal salvation, but works do qualify you for, for promotion. Yeah. said works do, does not qualify you for eternal salvation but works do qualify you for promotion Amen. Yes. when you get on your job glory to God you don't expect to be promoted unless you went to work so there's an empowerment coming I'm done there's an empowerment coming where we're not seeking after this power to seem greater than ourselves, we're really desiring power so that we can serve better. Yes. yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, serve better. Do something for God. What, what have you done for Him lately? Where is the proof of your anointing? Uh -huh. right. The proof of your anointing is in the things that you've done for God. Yes. Things that you've worked towards for God. Where's, where's your proof? I 
Ask your neighbor, where's your proof? Where's your proof? What can you tell God you're currently doing that qualifies you for greater? My God. What can you tell God you're qual how, how are you ministering to people? Right, right. How, how, how are you connecting yourself with ministry? How are you serving the assignment that's greater than yourself? You'll never receive the greater of God in your life until you learn how to serve something greater than yourself. Yeah. My God. My God. Hallelujah. You'll never get it. In order for you to serve something greater than yourself, you have to recognize something as being greater than yourself. Yeah. Amen. And some of us have a mind problem where we don't think anything is greater than ourselves. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. There's a whole lot of people jumping and screaming and hollering today because it's Pentecost Sunday thinking that was it. But the purpose of the Holy Ghost was so that they would have the ability to serve in the assignment God had given them. Yeah. And that was to go into all the earth. Yeah. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Amen. The Holy Ghost brings a whole lot of other things, but at the core, right. it is service. Right. That was Jesus' mission, and that's your mission. Yes. To serve the assignment of God for your life, for ministry, and for the world. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. This morning that I've said many things. But Father, I thank you that by something that I may have said this morning, there's come a desire in somebody's heart. A desire in someone's mind. Number one, to keep growing. Number one, to keep growing. Father, I, I pray now that right where we're standing, that there comes another desire in our hearts to grow, to be fed, to learn, and to become. Father, you've given us a mandate to become your image in this earth. And Lord, we have done a poor job of that. We've done a poor job manifesting and serving your assignment. And that was the only thing you came to earth to do, Lord Jesus, was to serve the assignment of your Father. And we, we haven't matched that level yet. We're trying to get the greater, but we haven't even done the these works yet. And Father, we pray this morning that you would help us. Are you praying with me? Father, we pray this morning that you would help us to accomplish the works, to move into the greater. We pray that you'll be able to look at our lives. I need you to pray with me. That you would be able to look at our lives and see the things. We want you to give us things to do so that we would be able to be found faithful in something. God, give us something to be faithful at. Whether it's just standing at the door, whether it's just serving our leader, whether it's ministering or simply calling somebody every week to encourage them, God, give us something to do so that we can be found faithful, God. God, give us ideas. Father, give us purposes and assignments. Your word says that we be faithful over a few things that you would make us rule over much. Father, we pray for divine consistency this morning. We pray that we won't drop the assignment because of challenge. And we won't stop serving you because of anything that we're going through. Father, teach us to be consistent no matter what. Father, teach us how to press forward in the midst of adversity, trial, and tribulation. That we would be able to be found faithful in doing something. That you would empower us the more. We need your power the more, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
If I were you in this moment of prayer, I would ask God to help me be faithful at something. You need to be faithful at doing something. I want you to hear this. You need to be faithful at doing something. You need God to be able to look at you and see that no matter what, He keeps serving me doing this. You must be faithful doing something. So that when the time of Pentecost comes in your life, the time of empowerment comes, God is able to look at you and bring you into the upper room. Seeing that you were faithful. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. There's a thirst and there's a hunger coming up on you. And even in this place, many of us are repenting for being inconsistent in the things that God gave us to do. No matter how small we thought it was or how large it seemed to be, let's repent for being inconsistent and unfaithful. Hallelujah. Now, Holy Spirit, I thank you. Promotion comes from you. Now, Father, I thank you that the grace of promotion comes upon your sons and your daughters. You said the first would be last and the last would be first. Father, I thank you that faithfulness will open doors for your sons and your daughters today. And the anointing upon the anointing of your son comes upon them. Of your son comes upon them. The skill, spiritual grace comes upon them now. In Jesus' name. I'm here to the next 60 seconds to pray about what you've heard as we worship. Apply it to your heart and your spirit. Come on, 60 seconds. I want you to open your mouth and pray about it. Start to change. 
Jesus as you become faithful. Faithful in ministry. Faithful in relationship. Faithful in service. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the only thing that prophetess Anna did was come to the temple every day. She didn't do anything super great in the eyes of other people. She just started to pray and fast every day. Come on, Dorcas didn't do anything that seemed super great. She just started to make clothes for people that have them. Do y'all remember that? And the Bible says when she dies, that her works start to talk to her. All of the people that she had done so many simple things for surrounded her bed. And they didn't have to scream and holler. All they did was bring the clothes. And God raised her from the dead. You want to see bad things raised in your life? Start to be faithful and doing something. If it's praying for your leader at a certain time every day, say, Father, I'm going to pray for my leader every day. Be consistent at that. Father, when it's service time, I'm going to be at that church and I'm going to hug everybody come through the door. You might not be holding the mic, but be faithful in doing something. That's how your miracles going to come, I guarantee it. That's how your breakthrough is going to come. If you say, God, every week, every day, I'm going to call at least one person and encourage them. How are they talking? Our lives have been so messed up.